we were looking at active control and we looked at the kind of uh, actuators and sensors that can be used and we also looked at uh, very briefly at different types of control. So, we had a model based control and non model based control and we said that uh, either you have a controller which does not need to know about the system uh, which is non model based control you can do system identification and so on. But then there is no guarantee on the uh, fact that the uh, guarantee on the uh, effectiveness of the control uh, there is no mathematical proof that you can give that at least in principle controller should come controller should work. Uh, so, the, if you have a model based system the controller does need a, a detailed knowledge of the system, but then it can the controller can give mathematical guarantees that uh, the control will work at least on paper. So, um, which is good which is bad I think that is the experience of the engineer. So, you can answer this question only after having worked on the subject and control some oscillations. I have myself not been working on this topic, uh, but I think the answer is not very easy and one needs to have experience and then only you can give the answer. So, I am trying to uh, do here is to give a flavor and so in the examination I am not going to ask you whether you use this controller or that controller because I myself do not know the answer. So, do not worry about it. So, uh, uh, last thing I want to any questions so far? take care that the other factors doesn't get affected by what we control. Yeah, so uh, I uh, used to work in a lab where there are thermoacoustic instabilities and uh, there was a very old engineer who does not write any equations and so on his name was Bob Daniel and there was this young control guy who was trying to set up this new controller. So, this guy lay a challenge he had a pulse combustor and uh, he said he had a combustor with pulses and he said you control this and uh, I mean I will give you money and he controlled it is working at first mode and he controlled that some third mode came up and you control the third mode the second mode came up. So, uh, this is kind of called water bed effect it is like a water bed you push something down somewhere up it comes up. So, yes this danger is there and we saw a briefly in that uh, review article by McManus he has written about uh, some conflicting thing you do something to control own mode, but this action may actually end up creating another. Uh, another mode instability and that is there and there are some solutions to it, but I think that is beyond the scope of uh, the level of things that is dealt in the class, but you are uh, what you are saying is correct. No, what I was asking is not uh, effect on the acoustic mode itself, but the whole system uh, can change you know, some at least. You mean the mean properties can change. Mean properties or uh, some other properties which are part related to yeah, it. It could be possible yeah, so I think that is the challenge. Is there like some uh, way like uh, we should select the system? I think it, uh, I mean you have to make sure that uh, everything is within the operating envelope that is given to you I mean you should not push the system out of that in terms of the performance. There is no mathematical way of knowing, but exclusive. I do not know the answer sir. there may be I, mean. I, I do not know the answer that is. I don't know if anybody else here knows the answer, but I do not. There may be, I mean, it is a very big topic, and I have not worked on it. So, any anything else? Okay. So, uh, in reality, the practical combustors possess uh, turbulence, I mean, the flow is turbulent, and uh, we always study laminar flow, but the reality is that the flow is turbulent, and uh, it is very hard to mo model this turbulence acoustics and combustion accurately. and physics based models of the system are unlikely to be sufficiently accurate to use as a basis for controller design and we um, talked about many reasons in throughout the course why uh, what are the difficulties in the modeling and we looked at uh, like where uh, improvements possible and, and so on. Um, the uh, recent thing is this non normality and so on. So, this means that the controller must be based on system measurements. Uh, I mean that is one possibility although the consequence of instability may be such that obtaining uh, this may not be uh, straightforward in a certain operating regime because your acoustic oscillations at the start of the instability may be comparable to turbulent oscillations and so it is quite difficult to make measurements. And there are likely to be several modes of instability spanning a frequency range in which the oscillations can come up and in such cases it is important the controller is able to control more than one mode. So, 
the system will as we saw will almost certainly involve substantial time delays caused by factors such as fuel convection and acoustic wave propagation and uh, this could be larger than uh, of the order of a period or larger than that and we have to estimate them accurately. Nevertheless, in spite of all these problems people have succeeded quite a bit in the laboratory with small combustors, but they also installed it in the uh, real uh, combustors in the field uh, quite some time back. So, <coughs> of course, in the lab very sophisticated controllers have been used, but uh, and primarily uh, in the beginning uh, most of these controllers use loudspeaker to use the uh, use as control, but later on secondary fuel injection became uh, a very important uh, possibility with the development of good actuators and that was uh, uh, considered better because you can get higher powers uh, to be able to cancel this uh, or to be able to make the system stable uh, compared to a loudspeaker and also secondary fuel injection is much easier to deal with compared to a loudspeaker in a combustor. In a classroom maybe a loudspeaker works very well, but um, in a combustor maybe it is not a good idea to have a loudspeaker in this hot environment. Uh, uh, nevertheless. <coughs> So, in, in spite of all the problems people have gone ahead and a full scale demonstration was done in 1988 in the afterburner of a Rolls Royce RB199 military turbofan engine by Moran et al. The full reference given in the paper by Dowling which I mentioned in annual review and actuation was actually achieved by spilling fuel from the engine rather than um, adding oscillatory fuel and they oscillatorily spilled it uh, using higher response electro hydraulically servo valves and uh, they uh, modulated about 5 to 10 percentage of the mean fuel flow rate. And uh, so, this was a simple time delay controller and then they got 12 dB reduction of the afterburner bus. And in 1998, um, Sume et al and Hoffman et al tried active control around a Siemens heavy duty industrial gas turbine, the industrial gas turbine for power production and so on. So, it is an annular combustor with this azimuthal modes and uh, they had to measure pressure at many locations. and actuation was by modulating fuel to the pilot flames and they used a solenoidal valve and it was again a simple gain and phase shift controller and uh, this was the first one for Siemens and they got 70 dB reduction which is 17 dB, 20 dB is like one tenth factor. So, this is almost like one tenth. 1999 Cohen et al tried in UTRC United Technology Research Center that is the Pratt and Whitney, en Pratt and Whitney engines and they got 16 dB in a single combustor and 6.5 dB in sector combustor. And uh, Neumayer and Zinn tried on uh, I think Westinghouse engines uh, adaptive phase shift controller and they got 15 decibel uh, reduction. And ever since that, so this was these things are about 15 years back or 20 years back and a uh, lot of progress has happened with uh, controllers. Uh, nevertheless, these companies G and Pratt and Whitney and Siemens, they are not having these active controllers in their engines, neither in the military engines nor in the industrial engines. I think Siemens ran their combustor for quite some time, some of them with uh, active control, but then it was quite expensive. I think you have to pay um, substantially more for the version with the controller on. Uh, and somehow they feel that this thing will work is not there by the engineers for some reason and so they are not favoring um, going to this and they are I think they are quite nervous about I mean they expect the combustor to work for several years and so on and they do not think actuators will work that long although the active control people say that look your actuators in, actuators in the cars they work for many years, but for some reason uh, uh, the people in the land based gas turbine industry they are willing to work around it even the military engines if anything they will be the ones who first come around to uh, active control, but at the moment they are again working around it by um, doing passive control and uh, adjusting the operating envelope such that you do not get into instability. So, that is where the subject is, but um, overnight things can change with some game changer coming in, um, but and maybe some of you will uh, get to make this practical uh, as used by the industry. Uh, just like in aeroplane fly by wire and all are used although it is quite involved intricate technology and uh, and if something fails there is quite a bit of consequence, but people are using it. So, I, I guess someday it may work and I think te technology prediction is not a 
very easy thing you must have heard about a lot of predictions gone wrong so i wouldn't make any predictions but just hope that this may come into existence okay so i'll stop the active control with that uh, yeah uh, is it necessary that always the active control uh, that we are giving should be of the time scales of acoustics uh, there are other type of control for example you can change something which are length huh? sorry so the, there is tuned passive control that means if some kind of thing comes you tune it to make it disappear but you can also people would be okay to uh, there, i mean i don't know whether you can call it active control but uh, if you can uh, something comes on and you can change the equivalence ratio or something which is um, happening at the lower time scale than the acoustic oscillations that the engineers are okay with and i think that kind of things are used in the industry but what is traditionally referred to as uh, feedback control is things of the time scale of the oscillations that is what the engineers are not very pleased with the existing outcomes of that but the other one also exists yeah. and and uh, engineers are happy with uh, that kind of control anything else okay so we have uh, one more class left so there is in time to the lot of topics that i can cover but i thought i will speak about a solid rocket motor which is quite important and our country has a good solid rocket motor program uh, and this is a very big uh, topic and uh, i have lot of data with me but i cannot show any of this because i may be put in jail so uh, because of this video recording so uh, i'll have to I, mean, I can't say most of the things that I <laughs> could have normally said, so I, I, I apologize for that. Okay, but I will still try to give you a flavor. And uh, again, copyright for these things, I, I don't think anybody will give um, give me. I mean, I can get for regular stuff, but not for this. Uh, to put it, so one calculation I will um, show myself. But apart from that, uh, the data, I can give you some uh, papers. You can uh, references. You can see in that. But I'm not going to put them on the screen, which is being recorded, and I'm. really sorry about this but we can come to my room and i can show it and i cannot tell the names of the motors and so so uh, uh, combustion stability in srm is solid rocket motor and those are those massive things and uh, we are talking about uh, so far jet engines and combustors and all that but here you are talking about really massive things which uh, like 200 tons burning off in uh, 90 seconds or 100 seconds and so on so that is the level of intensity the pressure is in a gas turbine maybe of the order of 20 atmosphere here we are talking about um, 60 70 atmospheres and in a liquid engine maybe even 300 uh, bar i think i see many of the people here who have familiarity with all these things rajesh the uh, garg uh, so uh, i think as i said when the performance increases that's when you go crazy so when the performance these are uh, per machines which have incredibly high performance and of course when you push things to incredibly high performance they can go crazy also um, as human beings do so uh, when you say combustion stability in srm loosely it is meant that the pressure oscillations inside the chamber and uh, strictly i mean again uh, it depends on what context different people use in different sense you can have continuous increase in amplitude and you have growth rate like e power alpha t and all that as we uh, have seen and uh, uh, like instability means something going unstable and this is caused by positive feedback from the propellant combustion that's what is driving here and uh, practically with uh, limit cycle oscillations can exist uh, practically limit cycle oscillation can exist and it that's a possibility but there's also a possibility that the oscillations come and before the oscillations uh, the amplitude uh, stops growing and reach a limit cycle the motor may uh, blow up also and uh, <coughs> I, I suppose you can guess what is the level of oscillations when you have large instability or very huge instability is coming. I don't know what is the right term. Large instability, huge instability, I don't know. Catastrophic instability. Does anybody have any idea? Five percent of the mean. Yeah, five. I even seen twenty percent of the mean pressure oscillations, or even twenty-five per, uh, percent. Um, so this is like I have seen oscillations of the order of twenty bar in some, uh, and where the uh, the combustor actually the rocket melted off and then. I mean, that kind of things and the people who were doing the uh, static test they are standing kilometers away or something but they sometimes feel that i mean there's, there there's a lot of safety regulations if you're doing a srm test you have to be this much distance away i don't know the uh, rules but 
and but they many times felt that they will die or something just hearing this pounding and uh, the shuttle astronauts uh, space shuttle they say uh, the, it has a very feeble oscillation but still it is at 15 hertz and uh, they say that they feel very uh, jittery uh, when this oscillation come uh, 15 hertz is like low frequency sound and a human body will uh, respond to it. You might have seen the movie Jurassic Park in a good theater and you can see the when the dinosaur comes they this kind of if it is a good theater you will feel it and uh, human uh, I think natural frequency is 4 hertz. So, if you are coming closer to that you feel more and more jittery I think 8 hertz some of the internal organs uh, I mean uh, as in has natural frequency. So, low frequency you really feel pounding and the, uh, most of the motors have the uh, instability in some form or the other. The question is only it is whether it is 20 bar oscillations or is it point bar oscillation even if it is point 0.1 point one bar oscillation you still have this feeling, but okay, you can teach somebody to live with this feeling as not they can take a lot of abuse. So, there is also damping luckily, uh, uh, which is why many times you can live with the oscillations and the oscillations do not uh, grow exponentially uh, damping from so, now some of the oscillations can escape out through the nozzle, the structure or the liner can damp out some oscillations uh, and uh, you can have particles aluminum particles in the rocket and they can damp out oscillations and, and so on. So, uh, there are many damping phenomena. So, there is always this driving versus damping and, and it is always a fine margin and, and this driving has to be lower than damping throughout the range of operations. Many times what happens is this may be uh, like this in the beginning and then 20 seconds into the firing the driving may become more than the damping or uh, and then the thing comes on. Uh, and if you do calculations uh, 0.1 bar oscillations over 50 bar mean pressure uh, results in uh, typically you know. So, this is like 0 0.1 divided by 50, but the thrust oscillation will be 5 to 10 times that of uh, uh, the pressure oscillation. So, if you have typically 0 0.1 percentage uh, uh, pressure oscillation it may translate to a 1 percent thrust oscillation. I think 1 or 1 percent thrust oscillation emission can take, but maybe more they may not be able to take. Uh, it can cause reignition of fuel exhaust fuel rich exhaust you know SRMs work with uh, solid rocket motors work with fuel rich exhaust. I guess you know why huh? no 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 high ISP. So, if you uh, if you have a fuel rich product a fuel, a fuel rich combustion then your molecular weight of the exhaust products will be lower and then you will have higher ISP that is the reason uh, not really to lower the temperature. Uh, in, in gas turbines you have burn with excess air to lower the temperature, but here that is not the case uh, you want higher ISP that is the only thing. And uh, so, you have quite a bit of fuel left in the exhaust and that can cause uh, that can be re uh, ignited because of oscillations and they can enhance the mixing with the ambient air and this can cause interference with ground based uh, navigation systems and as I mentioned 15 hertz oscillation in space shuttle SRBs make uh, astronauts feel uh, jittery. Mm. And uh, typically uh, I, I as I said I will try to draw a picture because I may have copyright violations. So, uh, they uh, express this you know we saw that we can express the oscillations we can look at the oscillation with FFTs. But the problem is as I mentioned there may not be instability when the motor starts, but sometime later instability may come on. So, what they do is they um, um, acquire signal continuously and then split the signal into every 0 0.1 second or 0 0.3 seconds and then stack up the FFTs. So, so let us say it is quiet and then a peak starts appearing and then suddenly bang this peak is big. And then what would be interesting is at some time the instability changes frequency and then of course, it may die down also after some time. So, this would be frequency and this axis will be amplitude and this will be time. So, this will be short term FFT. So, the way the picture looks like it looks like a waterfall. So, that is why this is called waterfall diagrams and 
uh, I am just hand drawing a schematic because of I mean I am concerned about copyright issues and, and security issues. So this would be called So if you, you people look at this plot and if this if there are spikes in it then you have instability and you can make out many things by looking at this instability, looking at this plot. You will also see what is called a DC shift that means the mean pressure will will change it may go up it is called mean pressure excursions due to oscillations. So typical thrust time trace or, or pressure time trace pressure versus time you will have ignition sorry you will have ignition transient and then maybe if everything goes very smooth you will have a burn this way you yeah no no it is uh, it is uh, I mean typically uh, they have pressure transducers mounted in the solid rocket motor and that is being acquired. You can of course simulate and plot also, but uh, I mean in the actual uh, live firing static or the flying um, missions they will be acquiring data with piezoelectric transducers or piezo resistive transducers and they are plotted. Okay, so, you have the pressure time trace. You can also get the thrust, thrust time trace with accelerometers and, and so on and that will also follow something similar and this is a quiet rocket and everything will be happy and then if things go wrong then suddenly instability will come on and in fact the, if you look now the mean pressure itself is somewhere here and, and then if the motor survives eventually the may, it may go off and come back or it may uh, the motor may structurally fail. Uh, so, this would be like highly non-linear oscillations and the mean pressure itself will shift not just you know we when we studied earlier we said that you have mean and then you have fluctuation around it, but here the mean itself has now gone up. Uh, so, you can also have small amplitude fluctuations where you have things like that. Th that would be like a linear kind of oscillations around the mean, but here the way I would I have drawn it as the mean itself has shifted and you can kind of imagine why this would happen because the uh, whenever there are oscillations the transport processes get enhanced tremendously and uh, so the heat and mass transfer to from the propellant goes up so much that the mean burn rate itself is very high and therefore uh, you can have mean pressure shift in oscillations. So, that is uh, something which is seen and, uh, and when you have large oscillations. Yeah, so this will uh, burn up faster. So this may just fall off like that, or if it stays that long, or it may just uh, structurally fail. You are absolutely right. So the the thrust will change, and then the vehicle will go somewhere else. Also, that's also uh, uh, that. I mean, even if the vehicle is fine, the mission would have failed because it uh, went elsewhere, not where it's supposed. to. you can have uh, structural oscillations. So, you can have even we may have a small amplitude limit cycle oscillations where uh, the oscillation may resonate with the structural member in the vehicle causing catastrophic uh, destruction. Other systems uh, could include guidance and um, uh, guidance and navigational control electronics. So, you may have a motor which is in the static test everything is successful you have uh, uh, you have uh, the motor staying fine and very small amplitude let us say 0 0.01 percent of the mean pressure oscillation or something, but in the flight it fails because you have uh, the system uh, these oscillations might uh, lock uh, might be uh, corresponding to the natural frequency of some of the electronics. Right? Uh, electronics are in general sensitive to oscillations, but in some system 
may fail simply because uh, we are oscillating at the frequency. So, typically the test for all the possible frequencies uh, in the structure and the uh, systems involved and make sure that you uh, none of them resonate with this. I can tell you a story without naming the uh, motor. So, uh, I have heard in America there was a, a, a motor which was in it is a missile working fine and so on and then all of a sudden in uh, flight test the motor started uh, the rock miss the missile started failing it, it started uh, just blowing up and uh, so it was thought to be combustion stability but then um, you know even in peace time they fire missiles just to be sure that everything works so now they took the missile back to static uh, i mean the st static test stands and started firing and uh, the missiles are completely fine but then you fire they are failing so it turned out that um, somewhere down the line the aluminum supplier changed and so something slightly changed with the aluminum and uh, so they ended up having a different kind of particle damping characteristics even though the aluminum particle apparently looked like the same size they uh, some slight change was there and therefore uh, they had the small oscillations they could not um, get rid of them whatever they did so what they did was to easy fix was to change the natural frequency of the navigation system and fix the problem. So, I think uh, um, these kind of things are uh, happening and uh, back to this burn rate argumentation. So, this kind of uh, uh, burn rate going up is called catastrophic burn rate peaks and they are reported under what people say peculiar conditions. But then the effect of oscillations on burning rates may exist under normal conditions also no one knows they, you put it in a ballistic evaluation motor and find the characteristics of the motor, but even there there may be oscillations and so what you think is normal may also be under some oscillations. And people also said that the same propellant when you put it in uh, when you load it in different rockets with different sizes they give different burn rates so, all this sounds like fancy stories, but I mean if you speak to people who deal with this profession they will say all these things. And the most difficult portion is oscillations are unforeseen uh, usually not usually always and they are at the, uh, still too complicated to predict a priori in spite of computer programs and all that. So, generally they are encountered late in the motor development program because this will not be seen till the firing occurs and at that time the options are really too few. Uh, to uh, available and anything that you propose the program manager will shoot down because he says he has to have the best missile or best rocket just have this that and so anything uh, you say would not be uh, acceptable because they want they do not want to change anything because changing anything will either mean a um, lot of expenses or it will also mean compromise in performance and no, nobody is unwilling to give. So, you have to have best of everything, but it has to work also, but it is not working because blowing up. And then the people who have some tricks of the trade uh, what professor play uh, professor price who was a expert in instability he called it resident black magician or something. So, they will have a few tricks of the trade employed rather than um, really a scientific approach. And in the end I, I was uh, uh, reading this paper by um, Bloom Shield uh, on lessons learned in solid rocket inst combustion instability. He says all uh, all motors have instability, or in general, uh, only question is whether they are very large, like 10 bar, 15 bar, that kind of oscillations, or is it 0 0.1 bar, 0 0.2 bar? And either they you did something and lowered instability or abandoned the motor. But it's um, you never have a motor which doesn't have oscillations. So you have in general you have oscillations. You can do something to reduce the level and you can live with live with some manageable problems or if it just cannot be undertaken maybe you drop the motor and use some other rocket instead for the purpose. So, uh, I mean it sounds very very bad, but uh, uh, very unengineering like, but that is the way it is. Now, if the rocket works it will have incredible performance that is what it is designed to, but it may not perform at all. I mean it may just have instability. So, it is a very real thing and you really um, you sit in this meetings where you try to fix this problem and you your hands are tied behind your back and you really cannot change anything, but you still have to solve the problem. So, that is the way it is. Uh, just give some quotes R S Brown who is an expert in instability said that 
over 70 percent of the SRMs solid rocket motors exhibit oscillatory behavior. The only issue is how, how much is the problem, the problem is always there and professor Ed Price, in fact he taught me combustion this professor, he said that more than 50 percent of the SRM research funding in the US is motivated by instability and uh, uh, France or view uh, from France, he has uh, I think it is from Onera, he said most motors naturally uh, whistle. Uh, so, everybody is saying this and uh, so it is unreasonable to expect your rocket motor to be completely silent and so on which is what this guy has said in this uh, bloom said in this uh, AAA paper titled lessons learned in solid rocket combustion stability. He said that uh, in general all programs had some problem or the other either you can live with the problem or tone down the problem and if you cannot then just abandon it. So, there are non acoustic and acoustic instabilities. So, non acoustic instability may be because of pressure spikes due to a slag ejection or it can be because of bulk mode oscillations or what is called L star instability. L star is a volume in the motor divided by a throat area and when you have small L star you would not have acoustic mode, but you have the whole pressure in the entire chamber go up and down. So, normally I am sure you have seen this equation uh, in the uh, which one uh, propulsion 1 course and uh, you have the rate of change of pressure uh, is going by uh, it, it, it goes like the difference between the amount of gases generated minus the amount of gases that is going out of the nozzle and uh, we usually say that this equal first term equal to second term and say that this is negligible the first that is not the case it may not be negligible and when the uh, V c is low or the L star is low this may not balance and then the whole pressure in the whole chamber can go up and down and that would be called L star instability. So, in acoustic instability you will have modes you will have pressure going from a maximum value to minimum value then back to a maximum value or, or a tangential uh, kind of oscillations or radial oscillation, but in this the entire pressure goes up and down. So, that would be the uh, non acoustic it, it that is why it is called non acoustic instability. So, that is a distinct possibility. Acoustic instability is of course, uh, mo most commonly encountered instability in any kind of motor and uh, when you say acoustic instability as I said there will be spatial variation of pressure oscillation there will be this modes which are often close to the natural acoustic modes of the uh, chamber. Is there any situation when we uh, design the motor to have a particular instability and make sure that that instability will not cause any problem? I think any instability is uh, problematic because uh, simply because uh, you know you are having uh, even a 0 0.1 percentage of the mean pressure, the mean pressure itself is very large will cause 1 percent change of thrust oscillations anything more than that uh, cannot be tolerated by the emission people. Plus if you are having a little bit more than that um, like 1 percent of the mean or something which is actually small, but in terms of percentages, but it is very large in terms of the uh, I mean the structure the way it vibrates it does not look at the percentage it just looks at the. Uh, uh, vibration it feels and uh, it will be quite large. So, I think it is very hard to say that I will uh, you, you, you I mean I do not think any way or formalism exists to design a motor which says this much oscillation they are coming anyway and uh, mostly it will come it will be uh, you do not have to do anything to get it to come and uh, I think it is if it comes then you try to see how to increase the damping and, and so on. Or can you add some additives to reduce the driving? But in the case of uh, places where we can have active control, hmm. it's uh, easier when we know that. Yeah, uh, right. I think uh, there is no active control with solid rocket motor because you are having 200 ton rocket with two tons per second, and, and at 3,400 degree centigrade, I think <laughs> there is no way I can uh, imagine uh, active control at this point. Maybe some some new technologist I mean I, I would not think of it at the moment. Yeah, in liquid rockets perhaps one could think of it, but they are also I think they would rather not have the in, they will have 
some lower level instability rather than go with active control. So, there is uh, approach to acoustic instabilities would be the same way as we did for gas turbine kind of combustors or a reek tube or something. So, you have to solve for port flow gas dynamics and acoustics and uh, we had also model the combustion response. So, there is a propellant is burning and, and you have to look at uh, the way the propellant responds. And uh, so, as opposed to our earlier equations where we neglected nonlinear acoustics that means, uh, uh, terms that come at when the amplitudes are very high. Uh, those terms will be quite significant here. We have to worry about so nonlinear acoustics can be gas dynamics, right? I mean, it's unsteady gas dynamics there, and uh, we have to also worry about acoustic mean flow interaction. So, when nonlinear acoustics is there, we will have uh, shock formation and so on, so wave steepening. So, uh, the um, if you have a compression wave coming, then the uh, as the wave moves into the uh, flow, the wave will heat up the flow. So, the back part of the wave will see a higher temperature. So, then uh, the wave coming from behind will try to travel at a faster speed because simply because it has a higher speed of propagation. And so, eventually, so the front part is going like this, back part is going faster. So, eventually, you tend to uh, catch up. So, just to draw this schematically. So, let us say we have a front like this, but uh, this guy is moving at a certain speed, but here you are trying to move faster. So, eventually, uh, you, you will end up this front steepening to form a shock, and this is uh, uh, will surely happen with the kind of uh, oscillation amplitudes that are seen in rocket. So, you are not going to see very nice sine waves and so on you surely nonlinear gas dynamics is important and uh, it will take uh, uh, we have to account for that many times. We also have to worry about the flame and how it behaves. I will speak a little bit more about it in the next class. So, you have a flame over the surface and the it is a very complicated flame structure and the, the flame responds to the acoustic oscillations and therefore, the mass addition that is coming out which earlier I mean if you have a steady uh, situation where there is no acoustic field you have a steady mass flow, but then that uh, would become uh, unsteady and that is what is uh, driving the acoustic oscillations. We will look into it little bit more in the next class. So, um, there is classical linear analysis which is what uh, we do with this acoustic theory. So, we try to set up the acoustic equations, we model the terms that are driving just like we did earlier in our class or like our n tau model and all that. In fact, n tau model came from rockets, it came from liquid rocket, uh, Croco was working on liquid rockets where it made the model. So, you have to model the driving terms and you have to model the acoustic field and the propellant. Uh, in solid rockets many of the rockets are very long, so only acoustic may be fine, but we have to account for variable area because you know the uh, uh, some part may have star grain, some other part may have uh, increasing cross section or decreasing cross section. So, if we can model the acoustics and if we can uh, find out what are the terms that drive and damp either from the volume or the surface, then we should be able to solve for the eigenvalue of the problem. And, and uh, so, to get the driving you need to model the combustion zone and damping we have to look at what are the factors that are involved in um, creating the damping. So, we will be solving for a complex omega which is the Eigen value complex Eigen value which is 2 pi f, f is the frequency plus i times alpha, alpha is the uh, growth rate uh, depending on the sign it's a, it can be growth rate or decay rate. So, if you write p hat as p hat e power minus i omega t and uh, you have uh, e power minus i 2 pi f t which is the periodic component and uh, there is this uh, e power alpha t which depending on the sign of the alpha is the exponential growth or decay rate. And so, in, in summary all the effort is towards uh, finding the minor part of the Eigen value which is called the growth rate or the decay rate. So, we can have 
longitudinal or tangential or radial modes uh, very i mean radial modes are not that frequently encountered longitudinal modes are very often encountered because simply because the rockets are very long but sometimes for the uh, rocket used for upper stages which are not very long solid rockets also you can see uh, tangential modes so we aim for the growth uh, getting the growth constant alpha and the growth constant can be decomposed into several terms in the linear framework so the way the theory is developed um, you can actually find growth constant due to individual effects and uh, then add them all up and uh, you can get the total growth constant that's the way it is i'm not going to work out the full theory but i'll just give you a brief glimpse of the theory so each term so you have a total growth rate or decay rate but it's consisting of uh, contributions from several different processes so you can have propellant combustion that gives a, a response which is um, can be of the form of a pressure coupled response or which is what is called alpha pc here uh, or you can have alpha vc which is a velocity coupled response so pressure coupled response is a term which is non controversial as the pressure is oscillating the flame above the propellant also oscillates and uh, therefore the oscill there will be oscillatory mass addition coming in and then uh, this term will invariably uh, drive the uh, acoustic field so that is the pressure coupled response velocity coupled response is usually uh, uh, kind of controversial term there uh, you might have heard about erosive burning what is erosive burning huh? why why does it happen so why, why does velocity gradient cause this velocity coupled response if there is a flow why will the burn rate change reaction yeah reaction rate the pyrolysis rate can change heat and mass transfer can change so the propellant um, uh, uh, the burn rate can change now uh, if you, if there is oscillatory flow also all these things can happen uh, but i think the way the term is interpreted there is quite a bit of controversy but everybody accepts that such a contribution is there but how to model it is what is the problem and uh, then there is distributed combustion so you have metallized propellants so uh, if you don't have metallized propellant then the combustion may be over right over the uh, propellant surface but if you have metal combustion this metal may continue to burn even away from the propellant surface so that will can have some contribution and uh, pd would mean alpha pd is like particulate damping particulate damping would mean if you have two phase flow that is when aluminum burns to give alumina and that's coming out through the flow and that's try to trying to take out energy out of the system then alpha ft is the flow turning losses that is you are having flow coming out of the propellant but then the acoustic field is perpendicular to it so the flow is turning then alpha n is alpha nozzle and uh, alpha s is alpha structure so <coughs> the uh, contribution to alpha are from pressure and velocity coupling this is the response of propellant combustion to pressure and velocity fluctuation and in sense you given a velocity fluctuation or given a pressure fluctuation how the uh, mass flow that is coming in to the port how how that how that oscillates uh, distributed combustion is uh, when there is aluminum droplet combustion in the port flow port is that hollow thing in the middle so when you have aluminum Uh, particles there can be other metal particles also they can also burn uh, flow turning is the uh, loss term it is lost to uh, uh, like you have gases emerging in a non oscillatory way out and then that is turning into the acoustic field and so in this process it takes some energy from the acoustic field the gases that come out uh, readily but then they turn so in this process they turn out some uh, they take out some energy nozzle loss is a very good loss that's probably the most dominant loss mechanism so uh, you have acoustic field inside the rocket and nozzle is uh, usually reflects most of the acoustic energy but some amount of the energy will be leaking out and radiated out uh, as radiation from the nozzle so this is the uh, nozzle loss uh, factor uh, when you have metal combustion you have aluminum oxide or some other oxides so there is two phase flow and the droplets they take energy from the propellant and uh, in this uh, uh, from the acoustic field and start oscillating so if you have a droplet in acoustic field it is like uh, the acoustic field will drag the drop back and forth 
and in this process now initially uh, all the energy is with acoustic field and now the droplet has taken a part of the energy. So, that means as the droplet gains energy it is the energy in the acoustic field is coming down. So, that is the way it is damping it is because of uh, mainly because of drag, but if the uh, it can also be because of if the droplet is taking some heat there is heat transfer and mass transfer that also can cause losses. <coughs> so, different type of or instabilities need or frequencies need different type of particles. Uh, so, in, in fact, if you have low frequency oscillations, uh, particles which are slightly bigger in diameter, they are the best to kill the oscillations. And if you have uh, high frequency oscillation, you have to use correspondingly smaller particle size because you can imagine if you are having high frequency oscillation, you, if you have a big particle, the particle will not oscillate or anything, it will just it is like it is huge and it would not care. But if you have a small particle, it will respond to it. For a, a, a bigger particle, no, it, it may be e, for a bigger particle, it may be easy to respond to low frequency oscillations. Uh, that's the scaling. So structural vibrations. Uh, this is the this is very insignificant actually. Uh, exchange of oscillatory energy between acoustics and the chamber wall structure or the liner. But perhaps for a big motor, this may not be that in, insignificant, and uh, and if there, there may be a big liner and the liner may be able to take uh, some uh, amount of acoustic energy and, and do the damping. So, uh, yeah. on the flow itself while transition to turbulent region and all take some energy from acoustic side. Yeah, that is a slow turning losses. Oh, it is included in flow yeah, yeah, some amount, I mean there may be other kind of losses, but So, people have what I mean, there is something called standard stability program that is the American version the other versions I have some version on my own. Uh, so, you can calculate all these uh, values this was written I think most of you know Priya she wrote this program. Uh, so, you at different times I don't know the pointer does not work uh, in the. So, this is time. So, at different times you are calculating this uh, various alphas. So, the um, uh, pink is nozzle, blue is flow turning, green is particulate damping, uh, black is propellant response, uh, blue broken line is uh, pumping. Pumping is because you know we look at inviscid acoustic field, but actually at the surface the acoustic field uh, comes to rest and then you are having some oscillatory mass addition there. This actually creates some kind of uh, acoustic driving. Uh, and uh, so you add up together and you have net growth or decay. So, in this case the red line is the net net uh, growth rate and uh, in this case that is negative. So, it is actually decay. So, you have to evaluate this at uh, all times and then you uh, see what is the sum and will the sum say stay negative at all times that is what we are looking for. And if a, a as a general rule of thumb if the standard stability program if the stability program says the motor is unstable it will surely be unstable but there's quite a bit of possibility that your program may stay stable and it may still be unstable but generally the opposite doesn't happen program says unstable but the motor is stable uh, i think uh, that is usually not encountered so you 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 can predict this for um, first mode or second mode or, or third mode you you will never get very high modes but the first few modes you should take and, and look at them and you have to look at look look at the prediction at all times. We also saw earlier that vortex shading when we looked at the uh, vortex shading and uh, it also ca can cause oscillations in solid rocket motor. I think you remember that we said the vortex shading from the inhibitors. So, the vortex can be shed from an inhibitor it can come and interact with the next inhibitor and this can create sound or the vortex can flow over the nozzle and it can excite sound in the cavity and uh, even if there are no inhibitors a, a radially injected flow propellant burning is like a radial flow coming into a port and that will automatically given sufficient length that will roll up into vortices and in the uh, solid rocket has sufficient length. So, you will anyway have vortices. So, with all these things the that is why Francois Vio said uh, all motors whistle or something like that. So, they, there is aero acoustic sound. Now, this is not a propellant response kind of thing, but if this uh, couples with the propellant response you can have even large uh, even more uh, violent response, but even otherwise it can 
give uh, sufficient problems to I mean it can uh, give sufficiently uh, large amplitudes on its own. Uh, so, uh, we uh, the standard the stability program that I showed earlier there we had linearized everything, but in reality there is uh, non linear instability. So, there is non linear gas dynamics and non linear combustion response and their relative importance and uh, so the non linearities have uh, played two roles one is in limiting the uh, limit cycle amplitude in fact this non linear terms many times they take energy and, and they actually uh, would not let that indefinite growth happen and that is the main effect of the non linear gas dynamics. Uh, there is also no, uh, the combustion response to the acoustic field is non linear and triggering has been attributed to that. I will uh, uh, of course, be you some of you must be thinking this is what the analysis we did for Ricky tube and all that can we do it for solid rocket motor. So, if I um, have time tomorrow I will uh, briefly show uh, how triggering happens in solid rocket motor I think I will.